China's Foreign Minister will visit Australia next week for the first time in seven years. Joining us live from Canberra with more analysis is Gordon Flake. He's the CEO of the Perth US Asia Centre. Gordon, good to see you. It seems like China's Foreign Minister is coming out with good news for the wine sector. Do we see the likely dropping of tariffs on Australian wine as further proof tensions are easing? Well, it's certainly a positive development, particularly if you're a, a wine producer. Uh, what it does represent is the gradual removal of Chinese coercive economic measures against us. I don't know that it means they're resolved because they were applied without what we would call the rule of law, applied without cause for political reasons, and now they're being removed for political reasons. So it's not exactly what trade specialists would call WTO compliant, but certainly a positive development. And the Ockman talks with the UK's Defence and Foreign Ministers is also happening next week, a busy week uh, for the Foreign Minister Penny Wong. No doubt AUKUS will feature heavily in those discussions. This week we learned about a, a pretty disappointing US timeline when it comes to producing new submarines. Does it already look like the AUKUS subagreement's facing delays? No, I, I wouldn't be overly concerned about that yet. Uh, um, there has been over the last year a, a, a lot of kind of false alarms. You saw some very important senators in the U.S. Senate Armed Services Committee express their concern about U.S. production capabilities, and this is part of an ongoing process on that. Remember, in the short run, uh, the decision of the United States and the United Kingdom to, to forward deploy submarines in Australia in the next two years in terms of submarine rotational forces west that's the big deal. Uh, we're talking about the longer term ability of them to produce new submarines for us to buy. Uh, obviously, the U.S. has to get its, its production house in order, and that's something that Australia is invested in. Uh, and, but I, I wouldn't can take today's announcement as suggesting that the whole thing's falling off or the wheels are falling off the deal. This is part of a domestic process in the United States about their own industrial capability. We've seen round after round of primaries in the US, of course, uh, Americans heading to the polls in November this year. Joe Biden, Donald Trump set to face off again. Polls are showing that Americans are pretty unhappy with those two as, as the options. Would you expect a, a low turnout as a result? No, because unhappiness also drives turnout. Uh, one of the things that former President Donald Trump could never understand is how Joe Biden got 8 million more votes than him. And the reality is he got him because people were voting against Donald Trump. And, and so, unfortunately, this may be a question of who you hate less or who do you hate more, uh, depending on how the voters are motivated to come out. Um, it, it is easy to say, how did we end up with two candidates that nobody likes? But remember, there is a process in place. The Republican Party accounts for less than 30 percent of the electorate. The Democratic Party accounts for 30 percent of the electorate, and only a small percent of those go out to the polls. But Donald Trump won a majority of the delegates as required in the primary process. You know, President Biden has won a majority of the delegates as required in the primary process. But it's not a surprise, and it shouldn't be a surprise, that when you add the entirety of the other party and then the larger percentage of 40 percent of independents, they're unsatisfied. So both candidates are going to be unsatisfactory to the broad majority of the Americans, but satisfactory to a majority of their voters. Uh, one way or the other, though, elections are about choices. And by the time we get to November of 2024, uh, it, there will be a choice. And that choice is going to be not necessarily who inspires you more, but who frightens you more. Gordon Flake, always appreciate your analysis. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.